programming changes on this, and you can have an operator level or just a guest of visualization level. In this case, I'm going to go here to the main one line and take a look at the main one line diagram of our facility. So, so. Here's the one line of our facility. We have two utility entrances. As you can see, they're running about two and a half meg and one point two or three meg coming in to the facility. And they, they are basically a main time main configuration. And this is the main bus that feeds out through feeder breakers out into the plant through substations throughout the plant. We distribute the 13,000 volts. And each substation can be switched to manually to either side of this tiebreaker so they can separate and move power back and forth as needed. Okay. Over here, you have the four generators that are in this room right here. And the four breakers that are in the room behind us, behind me. In the, in the utility room on the other side is this generator main breaker. And then, another generator exists at our technical center across the, the parking lot, essentially, our tech center. And that one stands here and feeds our tech center at 480 volts. But then we feed it back in and tie it through a transformer back into our main bus so that all these generators can operate together on the same bus in any combination we need. Um, today, I don't... I, I don't, they're recon, reconditioning over here, doing some work, adding the sound center. This one, I don't think, is even going to start. But uh, what we'll see happen here is you also see a live power level of our of our facility, 3.7 megawatts or so. So when I tell this thing to go, the first thing it's going to do is going to close this tiebreaker, put these two together, and then open M71. We have to get all the utility power into one utility feed in order to be able to control our paralleling load level. If we have one, two, three power sources on this bus, we can't balance them properly. We've got to have just two so we can balance them. So we'll close this, open that, all the power will be transferred to this utility. Start signal will be sent to the generators, all of them at the same time. Doors will go up, then it becomes a a race, the generators start to close onto this bus. You'll hear bang, 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 close. Once they start to close, the master control will send a variable signal out there telling them ramp up, pick up some load. And they will, basically you'll see the generator load ramp up and the utility load ramp down. So I'm going to this utility parallel control and I'm going up here to tell it to go into peak shade mode. Let's go look at a 
generators, for example. They're each running at about 60%. They're sharing load equally, and that's done with communication between each of the generators. They communicate over a twisted pair communication line and they share load. We can look at any one generator and see some the statistics and data from that generator. Speed is running, oil pressure cooling. Here's an interesting thing. This engine has 1,100 hours on it. It's been started almost 3,000 times with demonstration. Which means this breaker has got 3,000 operations on it. That's, that's a lot of operations for a breaker that's probably designed with about a seven or 800 operating operations kind of design criteria. How do you get your um, the gas consumption, the diesel consumption of the generator? We don't have any fuel consumption readout here. When this was put in, these engines didn't have that. Yeah, and normally on a standby, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, if it's a continuous, it's a big deal. But if it's a standby, The sound building too. So we oh, are we? Yeah. Not, not your fault. Well, we were looking at stuff. So, does that mean we should uh, continue this or should we cut it a little shorter? So, does it ever go to zero? Yeah, cut it shorter. On the grid. Say that again. I saw it still using the deep kilowatts on the grid. Does it ever like cut that off completely? Let me, should I break it? Let me show you that. Up here we have an adjustment. Its target now is getting for 750 kilowatts. I can change that. And it will drive it down towards zero. Sometimes utility re utilities require a certain amount of import. We're not, we're not pushing it right to zero as much anymore. We used to run right to zero all the time. Do you need to notify Excel that you're going to be going off or that they just uh, <laughs> big thing? They, uh, when this system first got put in, we had to call them every time we were going to do it. We call them a half hour in advance and say, we're going to do a demonstration. And they'd say, Okay, very good, go ahead. And after about, I don't know, a hundred times, they just said, we know it's you. <laughs> we know what you're doing. So it's a pretty significant thing. They know it happens. You know, three megawatts, used to be four megawatts, came off their local distribution grid and went back on. So you never open that breaker. <laughs> we don't open the breaker, we just state some more stable condition. This is a live manufacturing facility. We could open it now, just run a generator. If the utilities fail, the sequence is a little different. But these both open, the generators start, and as soon as they start coming online, the feeder breakers close and loads are taken up. So the starting time in a standby situation is instead of being 45 seconds to full load, it's 10 or less. The first load to get on the system. What I learned a lot about is, is the importance of the sine wave and, and the, the utility sine wave, it's going to be right out. You're not going to influence that at all. So as long as we're connected to the utility, they're doing 60 cycles a second. The engines are just kind of falling. You're not going to change the utility. So any any so that cleans up the sine wave, and then the other thing that happens is all of a sudden some big air conditioning load started. We grab that off the utility. It's pretty nice to be connected. It's, it's, it's real clean power, and we're just kind of filling in. In the master control, you can do all sorts of things. Basically, it's a programmable controller. We can do trending, watch loads, things like that. Watch load variations in the system. I think we better get them going, too. We okay. probably used to saw the people over. Sorry about that. That's a lot. I'm going to uh, turn it off. Okay, it's been a whole group. I'm going to turn it off here, and then we'll see what happens.
can watch that happen. About what year was this digital master control put in? Twelve years ago? Ten years oh, okay. ago? Master control was put in, uh, well, yeah, ten or twelve years ago. Now it's been upgraded once since. Yeah. Now it's ramping back, as I told to turn this off. It's ramping back by backing off the fuel. And when it gets to below 10%, we'll open the breakers. It'll transfer this back. Close the breaker in the other room and open this one. And now they're just going to run a cool down for 10 minutes. Okay, here's the deal. We're kind of late and we've got to walk miles. So we'll kind of walk forcibly, but not too fast. fast yeah, if you so walk too fast, let us know. And you'll want to make sure you have both your vest and your goggles on because we'll be on the back. Okay? I'll be here when we get back if you have more questions. Bye. Uh -huh. Yeah, three liter jackets here. Sure, you can't. You can be in anything here. I'm just gonna sneak here. Yeah, keep your badges <laughs> and your uh, yeah, vest. Come on, come on, come on. Wow, Tim, that's awesome.